Okay, so today we're taking a look at Bridge Builder Adventure on the Nintendo Switch. Now I gotta say, there's a ton of bridge building games on the Switch. Can this one get a recommendation from me? Or is it simply more of the same? Well, sit back, relax, be awesome, hit that subscribe button, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get this started. With no story to speak of outside of a few animated cutscenes that make well, zero sense. We're jumping straight in with gameplay today. Here, the setup for anyone who's played a bridge building game, it should be pretty familiar. Construct a bridge from point A to point B to get your vehicle across. To mix things up though, with Bridge Builder Adventure, you must collect a key on your way to the other side to unlock the gate that's gonna be blocking you. Now, as you would expect over the 60 levels this one provides, things are gonna ramp very, very quickly and get very, very difficult. Replayability wise though, they have a few tricks up their sleeves here. There's a few nice inclusions that come in the form of extra modes. These are designed to drive you back to repeat a level once you have beat it. These extras, what you can do, you can do one or two things. You can go back and try to top your high score using what will become available in the form of power-ups. So a magnet that can suck in the key, speed which gives you a faster vehicle, or space mode. That's lower gravity, meaning you can get away with using less materials. But then, for those who want something even more frustrating, even more difficult, there's a, I mean, a well-titled hard mode. Everything pretty much remains the same, you know, materials, all of that, but it makes your vehicle much heavier, meaning your bridge is gonna have to be a perfect example of construction. Roll on screaming at your switch because that's what this led to for me, I promise you. Construction wise here though, you get roads, wooden supports, steel supports, rope, and then even balloons to help you in this quest. Now you can't just go crazy either, you're working entirely to a very specific budget. Use too much of your budget, you're quickly gonna get stuck. That's a guarantee, it happened to me all the time through this one. I'd either have to jump back a few steps and try and reorganize, or just completely start over. Now outside of that then, you also get the occasional, what I'd call, boss encounter. Think a big ass, you know, spaceship or plane or whatever you want to say, and you need to basically build around it. What happens here is once construction is complete and you test it out, this will first of all fly across the screen and destroy everything in its path. It was a nice way to mix things up for gameplay, but honestly adds very little. I don't really see the point of bosses with no explanation of who or why they're even there. There was no story, so why have bosses? I feel like they just kind of skipped over that bit. When it comes to controls, you can play this one using a Joy-Con where you click and place your construction pieces, or my personal way to play, use the touchscreen. It's a touch and drag system that works really, really well. I didn't have a single issue with responsiveness, and to me, it was by far the most fun way to play. Overall gameplay, it's not bad. I enjoyed it, but I wish we got more. The difficulty ramps, you know, it's nice. There's a nice learning curve too, but I just wish we unlocked more things as we progressed, you know, more construction materials and things to use. This one pretty much just gives you everything at the very beginning and then just ramps up the difficulty. And I wish that wasn't the case, you know, mix it up a little bit for me. Other than that though, yeah, anyone who's played a bridge game before should know what to expect. And if you like them, then you're probably gonna enjoy this one, honestly. Graphically speaking, I like what we get here, a fantasy world of orcs, changing backgrounds then, you know, fire worlds, ice worlds, it mixes things up every five levels in regards to backgrounds, and that definitely helps for the longevity of this one, it never got too boring. There's also a huge amount of different looking vehicles you'll see as you progress. Visually though, it all works really well as a package, the only thing is, I, it didn't really do anything for me or have any reason without a story, like why, why are we an orc, why are we in these worlds? I can see the bridge builder part of the title, I just can't see the adventure piece. It's like they were going to add a story to all of this and then decided, you know what, screw it, we'll leave it, no one wants a story. I think it would have been a nice touch. You know, sticking a storyline to these visuals instead of these weird cutscenes that mean nothing, and this would not only elevate those graphics outside of just being something bright and colourful to look at, but also elevate the whole experience to me and make it unique in what is becoming a very, very crowded genre very quickly. Overall graphics, we have a good idea here that I feel they fell short on explaining. If you just want to build though, you're not going to be disappointed. They're pretty sharp visuals, it's colourful, it's definitely nice to look at. So yeah, it depends on what you're looking for. 
So last up we get audio and there's not too much to say here. It's, it's decent work though. On the sound effects side we get construction sounds and destruction sounds when you you know move something. But wood, steel, ropes, they all have different sound effects which I, I for sure appreciate. It would have been very simple to use the same sound for everything. Then the vehicles each have light engine effects along with the usual you know menu selection sounds and the occasional special sound you know when you pick up the key it's, it's kind of suitably fantastical. Then though for music it's pretty standard stuff, repetitive short loops, but I'll give it this, they're never annoying, I never wanted to turn down the volume, it never really bothered me. Every five levels then as you change the world, the music's going to change too just to keep things, you know, a little bit fresh. Overall good work on sound, didn't expect much and they actually delivered in quite a few areas. So overall Bridge Builder Adventure provides a solid experience, like I said though, I don't really understand the adventure portion of the title here. The experience is fine, it's like any other in the genre, but it kind of sucks that I can see the potential this one actually has and where it missed so clearly. But with challenging, ramping difficulty, 60 levels, bright, sharp visuals and some pretty cool worlds to look into, it does have quite a bit to offer. As I say, the only thing it's missing on is giving us a story behind these characters, these fantastical places we visit, and in turn it just misses out on giving us anything out of the ordinary for the bridge building genre. It's fun, but don't let the title fool you, it is just that, another bridge builder game and nothing more. Today I'm awarding this one a good 6 out of 10, I hoped for a little bit more honestly, as you can probably tell I keep on mentioning that story. But also at $14.99 in the US, £13.49 in the UK or €15, Euros, it's also a little bit pricey in my opinion honestly for what we get. Especially when you consider this one's actually free to play on the iPhone and iPad. Yes, of course it has microtransactions, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't mean you can't go download it, try it, find out what you think first of all and see if you're then willing to spend this $15 price tag. Thanks so much for watching, do you agree? Are we missing the adventure in the title here or do you not really care about a story yourself? Hit like, hit subscribe and we'll see you all on the next Gaming X.